So welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for the virtual seminar. Um, we will try and keep this to 30 minutes. So if you do um, have any questions at the end, um, we, can, we can get through all of that. But um, let's get into it. I am very excited about this webinar as we are focusing on women in tech. So it is really nice. It's a topic that has been at the forefront of the tech industry and there has been quite a lot of communication about it and conversations about it over the last few years. Um, we've seen a rising interest in the tech industry from women really since about 2016. So with now, we've now got over 28% of women fill, filling the tech roles that, um, and it's really only rising. So today we've got Chelsea here um, about, and she's gonna talk about the opportunities available to women in tech and how you can get into the industry. Uh, and as I mentioned, towards the end, we're also gonna have a Q&A. Um, and we can answer any questions you may have. So my name is Henrietta. Um, I'm one of the managers at The Learning People. So if you don't know much about us, what we do is we specialize in supporting people into new careers in tech and project management, and now have over 40,000 students globally. Our aim is to close the huge skills gap and also the gender gap that exists in the IT industry. And we strive to help more women get progress in their tech careers. Um, yes, and now we also have Tamara, uh, she is the manager and she runs the Biz Brisbane office, so hello, thank you so much hello. for joining us, <laughs> and Julia, so Julia is the head of the career services team, um, so I'll just get you to do a quick intro about you and about your team. Absolutely, well, good evening, I'm Julia, head of career services for ANZ. Um, the career services division at the Learning People, we're part of the, the support service that you get uh, when you enrol with us. We are a team of recruiters that support you through navigating that job market because um, a lot of people are career changers that we're helping. So applying for jobs and interview technique and so forth can be quite overwhelming for some people um, or everyone really. Um, but upon enrolment, you are automatically allocated to a career services consultant and our team is made up by ex-recruiters. So they do come with um, a lot of experience and advice to, to help you. Um, so you'll have that person allocated to you for your entire journey with us. Um, the career services process is rolled out over three parts, um, three phases, we call it. The first part is a CV consultation to ensure that your resume is looking marketable, especially with your new certifications or training that needs to be added to it. Um, we also do a LinkedIn consultation, again, that profile, making sure that that looks marketable. The second part of the process is actually, uh, it's all about networking and how to apply for, for roles. Um, Probably more commonly in tech, a lot of the roles are not advertised. So we guide you through and educate you of how to apply for those roles that are not advertised traditionally on those job boards, such as Career One and Seek and so forth. A lot of it is done through that networking process. But again, we'll educate you with that to, to support you with how to use that platform. Um, and also to the third and final phase is actually the interview preparation. So we will go through interview technique, what style of questioning potentially might be asked. Um, also too, which is quite commonly done in tech as well, is, um, is some skills-based assessments, um, which should be able to use the training platform to prepare for those assessments as well. So again, it's all part of that that one-on-one -on -one hand holding support that we will guide you through to, um, you know, once you've completed your training to, to gain successful employment. Yeah, I know um, how instrumental you are to all the uh, students out there. So thank you so much. Um, right, so Chelsea, welcome. Hello. <laughs> um, Hello. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so we'll get into it and really what I want to start off with is just kind of asking you a little bit about your background and just tell us about your career journey to date and sort of how you've managed to get to where you are. Yes, so I actually used to work as an event manager. So being a pandemic that threw a big spanner in the works for that particular career. So 
I, you know, I was at home in Melbourne, one of the worst lockdown cities in the world. And um, one day I actually received an email from Career One, which was, you know, mentioning careers in cyber. Um, and in the beginning, I think I just did it out of pure boredom. I, I sent through an inquiry to the website and I'll be very honest with you. The first time the the learning people gave me a call, I declined it because I was like, why did I even inquire about that? What am I doing? They persisted and called one or two more times. So I decided to answer the call and had an amazing chat with one of the staff there. Um, and it really started me thinking about, you know, what am I doing? Am I really fulfilled in my role as an event manager? I do love it, but there's a lot of aspects that are missing for me. And especially now that we've experienced this pandemic, I just don't know if I have any security in my role anymore. So um, it took another couple of calls, especially one with my careers counsellor, who I probably owe a lot to now. Um, she spoke me through a lot of different options that I didn't even realise existed. And that's the point where I decided, you know what, I'm going to give this a go. Wow, that's good. Well, I'm pleased that we've assisted. <laughs> Always good. <laughs> Um, what so what was it that first actually sparked your interest to think you know even for the career one ad that you wanted to look into cybersecurity and then even even then to choose to enroll with us? So I always said oh I would love a career in tech I know that tech is such a booming industry that would be so cool but I just never ever thought that it was something I'd be able to get into I sort of thought you had to be particularly I don't know, techie, to, just by nature, I sort of thought you had to have that in you. You had to have trained in that sort of thing for all your life, maybe studied it at high school and everything. Um, so it's nothing that I ever thought that I would get into. Um, so to see the email firstly even come through, suggesting that it was not as hard as it might, as people might think that it is, that automatically just sparked my interest. Um, and then further to that, when I spoke to the careers counsellor, I really started noticing that there were a lot of opportunities that were not what I was picturing, those stereotypical, you know, behind the computers, sitting in a server room type roles. That was not exactly what the industry was all about. And in fact, there were a lot of roles out there for people who, who have those communication skills and who have got an ex a, a history like I do because um, I didn't want to lose all of that I did want to be able to bring into it all of the skills that I've learned in my previous roles and that's what my careers counselor ultimately told me was a possibility and so that's why I decided this might be the right path for me oh well that's it's good and it is that stigma around IT is you're thinking that you sort of need to be in that server room and you're not talking to anybody, <laughs> you know, at all. So it is, exactly. um, yeah, it can kind of put you off it. You're because currently in the role that you're doing, you're currently working as a, a cybersecurity sales associate. So that's yeah. a little bit different to some of the roles that our students are getting into initially. So can you tell us a bit about your journey in that role and what that's like? Yeah, that's right. So in my discussions um, with the school and with my careers counsellor, um, she sort of explained that there was an avenue that you could go down, which was more customer and people facing. And that's why I ultimately decided to do the course. And I had no idea how I was going to get into, into that. I sort of also thought that at the end of the course, I'd have to go through a technical route and then potentially get into a customer facing role one day once I had more experience. But once I started looking into roles and applying after finishing the course, I realized that there was actually a lot of opportunity out there for people in client facing roles, such as sales, um, consulting and things like that. So my background is obviously very people facing working in events and I have worked as an account manager as well before in the past in the entertainment industry. Um, so when I applied for those few roles, I had a lot of interest um, just given my background. I had quite a few interviews actually. I was surprised how much interest I had and a lot of the roles were saying, wow, you've got such an interesting background. You've 
done events, you've done marketing and you've done account management, but you've gone and studied cybersecurity. A lot of them straight away within that first conversation were saying, oh, wow, this is really interesting. And so that definitely helped me get to this particular point. In fact, I don't think I ever would have had the confidence to even apply for a sales role within cybersecurity, Mm. even though it's account management. I just wouldn't have even thought to look that up or I wouldn't have had the confidence to apply for that particular type of role. So, um, yeah, it's um, it's definitely been amazing already to be able to combine both of those two things. Having the account management background has completely come into play for me, but then having that technical knowledge as well and being able to understand the terminology and the things that I'm trying to sell and look after for clients has been such a big bonus that has really helped me already yeah and and it is great and career services really do focus on that with you as well about the transferable skills that do come over because it is about making sure that you do feel confident to be able to do that um so it's just so great that you now you know have taken that step now that you're sort of at the beginning of working in the industry what are some of the avenues that you sort of potentially see yourself moving into with the tech in the tech industry? Well, I, even within one week of working in this particular company, I learned so much about the industry and there's, there's even more than I realized that you could go into. I sort of pictured, I mean, initially I pictured sitting in the server room and then after my discussions with the school, I thought, okay, there's two different avenues. There's the technical avenue or there's the client avenue. And I realized that is only just scratching the surface. Um, In my particular company, we um, have a GRC team, which is sort of a combination, I would say. It's it's not technical, but you do have to have that really in-depth knowledge of the policies, um, risk assessment and things like that, compliance. Um, We've got our OSS team, which is the very um, technical-based team. Um, but we've also got engineers and things like that. And so one thing that's already sparked my interest just from being in this company for a couple of weeks is that GRC avenue that I mentioned then. Um, It's possibly a good avenue for someone like me who I don't know if I'm really that technical. Um, After doing the course, I learned so much, but is that me? I'm not exactly sure, but learning about this GRC avenue is something that's really sparked my interest because it can still be working with clients. You have to sort of interview stakeholders and you have to speak to different people who are involved in the like policies and procedures of a company. And you have to work with them to provide your guidance around what they should be doing to improve their business and their security architecture. So that's one avenue that I'm definitely interested in looking into, Um, aside from even just building up within my own role. um, I've got a sales manager who is so knowledgeable about the technical side of things, even though she doesn't do the technical side of things just because she's been in the company for so long. Um, And I just listen to the way that she talks to the customers and she's just so confident and knowledgeable about what she's talking about. So even if I was heading down that route, I would be very happy. Um, I love hearing that your manager is a woman. (laughs) That's good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The interesting thing about my company is that we are very heavily uh, like staffed by women. And that's something that we actually spoke about really early on. Um, my team, um, it's about six or seven people and we're probably 90% women, I think. So wow. it's yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, and, and that would make you feel so much more comfortable and confident stepping into the industry. It's a really nice introduction for it. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it leads into the, the next question is, what do you actually think we can do to increase the number of women in the industry? Like, What can we do to really encourage women that this is an exciting opportunity and that we should be, you know, leaning into uh, the tech industry? I think we really need to just focus on spreading the word about the different avenues and the different opportunities that there are, because I 
didn't think that these types of opportunities even existed. And like I've said, you know, already I sort of, before realizing this course was out there, I sort of pictured someone sitting in a dark room and, and didn't really know what to expect. So if I had have known that these types of roles were available earlier, then I would have loved to get started even earlier than I have. Um, mm. Like even in my team, there's a marketing person there. We're looking about into getting a PR person and that's something that I guess a lot of people don't even realize. It doesn't have to be simply doing the technical work. There are so many different roles within tech companies that might suit some women better. So I think we really need to, and that's why I'm so glad to be here. And I'm so glad that you guys invited me because I'm so excited to spread the word and to be able to bring confidence to other women. Um, because it's really important that women do have more of a voice within the tech industry because it's just growing so much and it's part of all of our lives now. So we need to have that, that side of, you know, the side that women can bring to the table. We think really differently to men. So we can bring a lot of really valuable ideas, whether it be doing the tech itself or whether it be in those other types of roles. And it, and it is so important because in those other types of roles, um, you know, they say that a woman's skill set is that we can communicate really well. And there's so many other areas within businesses that is, you know, you have to have great communication skills. And sometimes, um, you know, men can mansplain. So it's important <laughs> to be able to have women, um, you know, to really be able to do that. So and it, it is it is thinking about as well with, you know, starting those conversations, what advice would you or, or should we be giving to women to enter the tech field? Like, is there anything you even wish you had, you've sort of touched on it a little bit that, you know, uh, there's other roles out there that aren't just, you know, sitting in that server room, but is there anything you wish you had known um, from moving into the tech field or maybe doing it sooner? Hmm. Well, aside from that, and I know I have said a couple of times about the server room stereotype, but even yeah. if that's the route that you want to go down, if you really are interested in the heavily technical roles, it's absolutely not like that at all. I just, the culture within the company that I've just gone into is incredible. Um, the people are so cool and young and friendly and welcoming. So I wish more people would realize that it's not as intimidating as it seems. Um, I was extremely nervous to apply for jobs as well. I'm sure my careers counselor would tell you because I had calls with her on the regular um, and she had to, you know, tell me, she had to boost my confidence, I suppose. And I've never been that type of person. I've always been a really confident person, but just stepping out of my comfort zone into something that I thought was going to be really daunting just really freaked me out. And so now that I'm in this company, I just want to spread the word that it's not daunting at all, actually. It's really supportive and there's just so much to learn. Um, so hopefully other women will start to follow suit as well with that. Yeah, amazing. And th there is so much to learn and it's, it is really exciting. And even just by you doing this, it's, it, it really does just spread the word. So thank you so much. We really appreciate um, you taking the time. Uh, I do want to circle back and just sort of say with the decision that you had when you were looking, what made, it, what made you decide to go with the learning people as well um, and choose to enroll with us? Um, that's a really good question because I actually, like I said, so I initially just sent through the inquiry for a little bit of fun, I suppose. Um, but then once I spoke to the, the school initially, I actually then went and did some research. I contacted another school um, and they, it's interesting, they tried to talk me out of it. <laughs> so this was an online school. I know, I know. This is an online school that also did um, some sort of marketing, project management. They did tech. Um, so they did a few different things. Um, but the sort of courses that they offered were certificates, um, which I believe Australia and New Zealand are fairly aligned. But um, the learning people, as everyone here might know by now, is sort of a global certification. So it's a little bit different. Um, so the other school that I spoke to said, oh, no, it's going to take you way too long. If I was you, I would just feed off what you've already done and maybe do a digital marketing course. And I hung <laughs> up the phone and I was like, maybe they're right. Um, but then after thinking about it more, I was like, no, the whole point of why I looked into this in the first place was because I wanted to change. I've done a little bit of digital marketing already and I'm still feeling 
these feelings. There must be something inside there that's not 100% fulfilled. So I called the learning people back and I challenged them on you know, what they had said. I, I said, look, I spoke to another school and they told me it might take a couple of years to finish all of these certifications or their equivalent of the certifications. And um, the person at the learning people said, well, explained it really well to me, explained that this was a different type of education and that I would end up with a global cert. Um, and that was a really big selling point for me. Um, even the fact that I could do it online, I could do it at my own pace. That was a really good thing for me, especially because I was in lockdown at the time and I didn't want to be restricted to just doing, say, one or two hours a week with the tutor. I wanted to be able to do it at my own pace. I wanted to be able to do it quite quickly. Um, so that was a really big thing as well. And then just honestly, the call that I ended up having with the careers counsellor, I owe so much to that call because I was still on the fence and she ended up talking to me for over an hour. I basically questioned her about every single thing that I was thinking. I was like, am I going to be taken seriously? That was one question that I had for her. I was like, be honest with me. You know, don't try and just sell me on this course. Tell me, do you think that I could really make it in this industry? And she spent an hour and a half on the phone with me talking through all the different options, all the different avenues. She was really honest with me about some of the different avenues. Like I sort of suggested, maybe I wanted to go into web development. And she said, that could be a really good avenue for you. However, with, there's not as much job satisfaction in that type of industry or that type of role because of this, this and this. And she really explained everything to me that just made it all tie together. And I came off that call excited. And I think I booked it that day. <laughs> Oh, well, that's great. And it's so important to get all that information though as well. So that, you know, because it is, you know, this is your life, this is your career. And so it's so important to be able to have that due diligence as well and get that support. Um, exactly. But yeah, yeah. Exactly. But it's all very exciting. It's You've got um, some really exciting things ahead. And it sounds like you're with an amazing company as well, which is fantastic. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you so much. It's an exciting time for you. And um, hopefully for the, the next woman who chooses to um, move into IT. So we've got, um, I'll move on. So we've got a few questions here that people have asked as well. Um, yep. So I will actually ask Tamara here, what is the best way um, to increase your chances of getting into the tech industry? Absolutely. So, I mean, there are a few ways to increase your chances of getting into the IT industry. Um, first, you do need to be certified internationally. So, by gaining certifications that are skill-based and recognized around the world, you are gonna become a lot more visible uh, to recruiters and other people within the industry. So the good thing about the certifications is they do a lot of talking for you uh, in the sense that it shows you've got the knowledge and the technical skills to do the job required pretty much from the get-go. Um, as the industry as well is so desperate for people with these skills, gender doesn't matter. So for women trying to get in, they don't have to worry about that. If you've got the skills, you know, you're just as marketable as anyone else. Um, secondly, you know, being active on forums like LinkedIn and in local groups, it's going to help get your name out there um, and also help you build a network, a really, really solid network. So showing industry experts that you're engaged, interested and knowledgeable sort of about your profession is going mm. to put you ahead of people who have no presence or desire, you know, to connect with others in their field. Um, and again, you know, continue learning. Even once you've started to get noticed or after you've gained a few certifications, by increasing your skills continuously, you know, your confidence is going to keep growing. You'll feel more comfortable taking risks, applying for different roles and, and really solidifying your place within IT. So, so those would be my tips. <laughs> Very good tips. I, um, yeah, definitely. Um, another question here that we have come through from Sam um, tomorrow, I'll ask you this as well. How much do you think the industry has changed? Um, is the gender divide in tech improving? Yeah, so I mean, although the industry is still heavily male dominated, um, there have been some really, really great movements towards sort of reducing that gender divide within tech. So in recent years, you know, there's become a much larger emphasis on diversity in the workplace, uh, which does help women feel more represented, 
more catered for and, and really more respected. Um, in addition, you know, the introduction of flexible and hybrid working has really encouraged women to, to enter those industries that they may not have thought was possible before. So, you know, remote working or hybrid working really allows, you know, women to, to fit work around their lives as opposed to the other way around, um, which obviously makes it a lot more attractive. Um, and there also, you know, been a huge move um, within large sort of tech conferences as well to include more female keynote speakers. Um, and with that, that offers just a, a lot more exposure to women who are actually looking uh, at moving into the tech industry, which is obviously fantastic. So, I mean, I would say the tech industry is, is definitely making an effort to, to shrink that gender divide for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think they, um, I might have mentioned at the beginning, but there's been, there's now 28% of women are being represented in tech and, and you know, that is growing significantly. Yeah. So it is, it's fantastic. Um, so we've got one here as well from BB Julia, which I, it's related to skills. So what skills do you think a woman can bring to the tech industry? Were there any transferable skills that are useful when moving to a career in tech? Yes, absolutely. Look, um, your transferable skills um, within the recruitment industry in general are, are normally referred to as your plus one. So that's all your soft skills um, in general. So you have your technical skills, which you'll learn through your training. Um, and then you have your soft skills that you transfer or that you've learned over the course of your career with your other roles. So those transferable skills that are inherently um, strong within females are things like strong communication skills, attention to detail, um, the ability to, to, to multitask, um, you know, the, the, the list goes on. So yes, absolutely, there are some um, natural skills that we do have as a female that can definitely be transferred over, not only from your, from your past career, but also things that are inherently female. Thank you very nicely put. <laughs> um, so there's another question here from Kaylee, and this is more around um, actual uh, roles. So are there any positions in cybersecurity or tech in general that you've noticed seem the most in demand with employers? Well, it was quite interesting with Chelsea sort of bringing it up before about um, governance and risk. It's definitely an increase, but that's sort of a, a, a role further down the track. It wouldn't be, it's not entry level, um, but there's definitely an increase in that area. But all roles within um, tech um, are, are highly needed, um, strong demand. So whether it be within software development, cyber security, cloud, um, there's always, has always been a skill shortage of candidates. And it's purely because a lot of the time the industry can't, don't or can't see the candidates or there's not enough candidates sorry that have the right skill set so it all comes down to your training so you need to have those right certifications right qualifications that the industry acknowledges to get in you can't just have qualifications that you know a mickey mouse learning provider um, has designed their own curriculum you have to align with what the industry requires um, and that's and that's what we do here so yeah so definitely um, cyber, the, the industries within tech, cyber security, software development and cloud would be probably the most in demand at the moment, in my opinion. Okay, I think we'll um, trust your opinion. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, I am conscious of the time. So um, I know we said we try to keep it to 30 minutes. So I think that's all the questions we will take for this session. But I do just want to say thank you so much to everyone for joining us. And thank you so much, Chelsea um for you're yeah, just sharing your story and you know it really does help and it does make an impact so thank you so much for your time we appreciate it um we will send an email out with a full recording of the session as well in the next couple of days so um people can freely watch this and you know if they're having any nerves about something they can go back and hopefully we've answered some questions that will make them feel more com comfortable um, and we look forward to speaking with you soon and helping you with your new career so thank you so much everyone goodbye